this structure which I've lifted up here, which is right at the posterior part of the posterior media sternum. This is the azygous vein. The azygous vein is formed by the union of the ascending lumbar veins, which unites L1, 2, 3, 4 veins. And as it climbs up, it unites with the subcostal vein, and that forms the azygous vein. And this is the formation of the azygous vein that I've lifted up here. This azygous vein then enters into the thorax through the aortic hiatus. And my instrument has gone through the aortic hiatus and has come to the abdomen to the thorax. On this side also, it has come to the thorax here. And we can see that that is the route the azygous vein takes to enter into the thorax. In the aortic hiatus, azygous vein is also accompanied by the thoracic duct and the aorta. From right to left, we have the azygous vein, the thoracic duct, and we have the aorta, ADA. Azygous vein then travels to the right of the esophagus in the posterior media sternum. It is closely adherent to the thoracic vertebrae. And then it passes behind the right principal bronchus. And we can see that clearly here. This is the cut portion of the right principal bronchus. It passes behind and it forms a hook-like arch. From posterior, it comes anteriorly and it opens into the superior vena cava, which is here. This arch of the azygous vein, it forms a groove on the right lung. And that is known as the impression for the arch of the azygous vein. Sometimes this azygous vein can actually form a groove on the right lung itself and can take the pleura with it and then it can produce what is known as azygous lobe of the right lung but that is not very common. Now I will draw your attention to these neurovascular structures on the right side. These are the posterior intercostal veins, these blue ones are the posterior intercostal veins. The right side, all the posterior intercostal veins except the first posterior intercostal vein, they all drain into the azygous vein and we can see that. We can see the azygous vein is receiving the posterior intercostal veins on the right side. What about the left side? On the left side, we do not have an azygous vein. Instead, we have something called any azygous vein, which is also formed the same way on the left side as the azygous vein is formed on the right side. Ascending lumbar vein unites with the left subcostal vein and forms a hemiazygous vein. And the hemiazygous vein receives the lower four posterior intercostal veins on the left side. And after that, it moves to the right and opens into the azygous vein on the right side. And this is that hemiazygous vein, which I have lifted up here. What about the middle four posterior intercostal veins on the left side? They all unite to form an accessory hemiazygous vein. And that also crosses to the right side and it opens into the azygous vein on the right side. And that is what I have lifted up here. This is the accessory hemiazygous vein. So hemiazygous vein, accessory hemiazygous vein. They occur approximately to the level of T8, a little below and a little above that. This azygous vein and the hemiazygous and the accessory hemiazygous are collectively called the azygous hemiazygous system. They form an important route of communication between the inferior vena cava, remnant of that is seen here, and the superior vena cava, which is seen here. So therefore, when there is a compression or obstruction of the inferior vena cava, like for example in liver pathology, then these communications by virtue of the azygous vein and the hemiazygous veins, they become prominent and they bypass the blood to the superior vena cava. So this is the communication between the inferior vena cava system and the superior vena cava system. Now let me draw your attention to the next structure here, which is just to the left of the azygous vein, and that is this one here. This is the thoracic duct. The thoracic duct starts in the abdomen as the cisterna chile. Cisterna chile is a small dilatation, which we cannot see very clearly here, because it is located deep in the epigastrium of the abdomen. This cisterna chile receives lymph from the lumbar lymphatic trunks, from the intestinal lymphatic trunks, from the descending thoracic trunks, and the posterior intercostal nodal trunks. And then the cisterna chile gives off a major lymphatic channel which is known as the thoracic duct, which enters through the diaphragm through the same hiatus as the aortic hiatus. And here it is accompanied by not only the aorta, but also by the azygous vein. Then it enters into the thorax. The thoracic duct happens to be the main lymphatic channel which carries lymphatics from the abdomen and the thorax. In the thorax, initially it runs in the posterior media channel and it is located just to the left of the azygous vein. At the level of T5 approximately, we can see that it makes a curve to the left and it goes behind the esophagus, it goes to the left side and then it enters into the neck and it opens into the left venous angle. What are the tributaries of the thoracic duct? In the thorax, it receives a posterior intercostal nodal lymph. It also receives lymph from the posterior mediastinal lymph nodes. In the neck, it receives lymphatics from the jugular lymphatic trunk, subclavian lymphatic trunk and the left bronchomediastinal trunk all from the left side. On the right side there is no thoracic duct, however we do have these three trunks, right bronchomediastinal trunk, right subclavian trunk and a right jugular trunk. 
and these three trunks unite to form what is known as the right lymphatic duct, which opens into the right venous angle. Venous angle is this. It is the union between the internal jugular vein and the subclavian vein. So this is the venous angle. So this is the site of drainage of the lymphatics. When there is an injury, stab injury or a penetrating injury to the left side of the neck, where the thoracic duct opens into the left venous angle, it can produce persistent drainage of milky white lymph and that is known as chyloria or lymphoria. And the patient can lose anything from 1.5 to 3 liters of lymph in 24 hour period. And that is a very difficult condition to treat and the only way to treat is to ligate the thoracic duct here. That's all for now. Dr. Sanjay Sanya signing out. Thank you very much for watching. Please like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please put them in the comment section below. Have a nice day.